What's your favorite Spider-Man villain? Maybe the Green Goblin. Uh, that didn't uh, occasion much applause. <laughs> <laughs> that was the dullest answer I've ever given. They're, they're waiting to hear why. Sorry, I don't know. We, we use him so often, and he's a big millionaire. And, uh, I don't know. Maybe he's not my favorite. I liked, um, who was the guy? I liked Sandman. I thought he was very original. And he should have been even a bigger villain. Because how could you hurt him? You shoot him, the bullet goes right through him. He's sand. He can turn his body into any shape he wants. He, I don't know why Sandman didn't become even bigger. Hurt him with water. You could what? Hurt him with water. No, you could just wet him. You couldn't hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why he doesn't write comics. <laughs> Considering the new laws that have been coming out, and like the major fan base is probably young men around, like in their young twenties and that, do you have any opinions about the new laws that they put out in Colorado and Washington and those places? The new laws in regards to to um, medicinal cannabis. No, can't. Yeah. Not a question for comment. Let's try this minute next minute, right? I'm uh, just wondering who you think your silliest character or power that you ever created? Who is the silliest character or power that you ever created? Willie Lumpkin. Willie Lumpkin? Sure, that's the silliest character. You think that's the silliest Willie character? Willie Lumpkin. Yeah. All right. So why didn't everybody go, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Will that work? Let's go to Gumbler here. Well, Have you ever met anyone that left you starstruck? Anyone that what? That left you starstruck. Like someone that you met who was like, wow, you're really, you're a huge fan of them. I met Ronald Reagan. Just guess that. I'll tell you a funny story about him. Exhibitor, exhibitor. Are you talking about I was at a dinner. And I was sitting opposite Ronald Reagan. He was sitting there, and I was sitting here. And we're facing each other. Now, what do you say to a guy who had been, this was after he was president. What do you say to a guy who's been the president of the United States? And you have to say something. So I said, gosh, Mr. Reagan, I'll bet you really miss, no, wait a minute. No, I said, I'll bet you are so relieved that you don't have all those responsibilities anymore and all those worries. And I'll never forget, he looked at me with his eyes so wide and enthusiastic, and he said, no, Stan, I love being president. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, I'll never forget that. Uh, right. Just like, I love signing autographs. <laughs> Uh, like, at a young age, what made you want to get into college and like, start, what was your inspiration to start writing comics? And start? What was your inspiration to start uh, writing comics? Uh, what made you want to get into this business? Greed. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I had to make a living. And there was a job open in this company, and I took it. And um, that was all, I never thought it would turn into this. I worked as an assistant to Joe Simon and Jack Kirby, who at that time were writing and drawing Captain America. And um, I went down and I got them their lunch at the drugstore, and I filled the ink wells. In those days, they used ink. And um, occasionally, they'd let me write a little copy. If there was a caption they needed, they'd say, hey, Stan, put in some copy here. And little by little, I did more and more writing there. One day, believe it or not, they got fired. I, I never found out why. But I was, it was a small department. It was just them and me. So the publisher, Martin, came to me and he said, Stan, can you look after things until I hire a grown-up? I was only about 17. Well, when you're 17, what do you know? I said, sure, I can handle it. <laughs> so I became the editor and art director and he never hired anybody else. I think comics were so unimportant to him, he didn't think of it. He published other magazines besides comics. He published men's magazines, sport magazines, movie magazines. The comics were in a little room off to the side. So 
so I stayed there, and that's how I started. I started with no, nobody remembering that I was there. Uh, let's go right here. Who's the most profound villain you've ever created? Who is the most profound villain? Who's the most profound villain you've ever created? Well, I always liked Dr. Doom. One thing I liked about him that I'll bet you never thought of. What's the one thing he wants to do? He wants to conquer the world. Now, I promise you, you can walk up to a policeman anywhere, and you can say, officer, I want to conquer the world. There's nothing he can do in that crime. Anybody could want to conquer the world. So as far as I'm concerned, Dr. Doom isn't even a villain. <laughs> you think that you can philosophize about that. Uh, someone else has asked a question right over here, sir, in the gray shirt. I think I have signed more things than there are people in this room. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to, uh, you mentioned Sandman being a villain. I was curious if you've ever had uh, a story where you felt like you had written yourself into a corner, like how are you know, they ever going to get out of this situation? And I also just wanted to make a personal comment. Thank you very much for enriching my life. I really, really appreciate everything that you've done. Uh, you want to, let me repeat your first question for us. Um, you talked about Sandman and how do you actually beat him? Uh, I was wondering if he had ever written himself into a corner. Have, have you ever found a situation where you wrote yourself into a corner, like how to beat a villain or something to that regard? No, never, because when I'd be writing a story, I always would figure out what the end would be. So I always knew how the villain would be caught or trapped. So that never happened to me. I wasn't dumb enough to put him in a situation where I didn't know how to get him out of it. That would have been too silly. And you also wanted to express uh, his thanks for everything you've done. I think you also wanted to express his thanks for everything you've done. You're very welcome. Uh, let's, anybody over here? I feel like I'm ignoring this side over here. Uh, that lady back here. What was your favorite female superhero or character and why? Well, it started out, it was Sue Storm, Mrs. Fantastic, because she was the first one I wrote. And then I kind of liked the She-Hulk. I liked the Black Widow. I'm not good at favorites. I, you see, I'm my biggest fan. I love everything <laughs> I like. And, um, but I guess of all of them, maybe Sue Storm, the Invisible Girl, because, um, and she has a force field too if they use it. And because she was the first one that I did, and so I have a sentimental attachment to her. It's like your first girlfriend, you never forget her. <laughs> Except I forgot mine. <laughs> okay, all right, ready? We're ready to do some photos now, so what we're gonna do is line everybody up. What we're gonna do is, 